Veronica suffers from a debilitating neurological or brain disorder called dystonia. I didn't like my family seeing me going through the rough times that I was going through. I didn't want my brother or my sisters seeing me struggle. I can't even talk, I'm sorry. Um, for Veronica, it's gotten harder. And to watch her deteriorate has been really, really difficult. Veronica's condition had been deteriorating for seven years until she met UCLA neurosurgeon, Dr. Antonio de Salas. Uh, Veronica was a very sad uh, teenager. She was always looking down. She never smiled. Uh, she was obviously in pain and obviously very annoyed with the fact that she couldn't uh, do anything in life but stay uh, in that wheelchair. They came to my office uh, asking for a possible uh, operation for her disease. Dr. DeSalas offers new hope to Veronica. Today, he will yeah. implant a pacemaker into Veronica's brain. We we'll try to get it all done, okay? Dr. DeSalas' hopes for me were he wanted to fix me and make me comfortable and just be able to sit up. Dr. DeSalas, can we pray with you? Yeah, sure. Once again, Lord, we just thank you for these fantastic doctors. And my hopes were to walk again. Oh, there's, it's just so much. We're excited, scared, and all those in between. When the brain is firing abnormally, like it was in Veronica's uh, situation, it's sending impulses of electricity to the muscles of the body in an abnormal way, so all the muscles are contracting all the time. This particular device just stops those impulses, blocks them in the right time. Great. Dr. DeSalas successfully implants the electrodes and threads the wires into Veronica's brain. A second operation connects the electrodes to a compact generator. So I'm going to go slow. Tell me if you feel anything. You might feel anything. The pacemaker is now programmed to do battle. You might not feel anything, though. So I went home and I was still in a wheelchair. My mom and my dad, they had gone to the garage to go get my walker. And everybody went in the garage and I was in the living room by myself. And I said, the heck with this, I'm gonna get up and see if I can walk myself. I don't need a walker. My mom turned around and said, Veronica, what are you doing? <laughs> Everyone was crying and, and we're like, go walk more, <laughs> go do this. Walk over here, let's see you walk here. In the garage, I walked to the living room, to the living room, to the kitchen, from the kitchen, outside. And I just kept doing laps around the house and I thought, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe this is happening to me. We were just blown away, and then we thought we would surprise Dr. DeSalas. Okay. Hey, Veronica. Hi. How are you? Uh, ourselves, we got very, very uh, emotioned about it. Right? Yeah. Oh, good. This is wonderful, huh? It is. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. The hope that I have for Veronica, she's a teenager, uh, is the same hope I have for my own children. I have teenagers myself. There is a lot of work that goes into making a doctor. And uh, the message that uh, is important to be given here is that uh, all the students and all the people that dream one day to be able to be a doctor, that uh, there is a reward in the end that is to see someone like this better, able to walk, able to have a normal life. Dr. DeSalas, I can't even, um, see I'll get emotional with this one because the positiveness because he did it in such a caring and loving way. He showed us love, he showed us grace. I can't even tell you, UCLA has been awesome. I could never repay him or thank him enough for what they've done for my daughter. They've given her a new life. Good luck for you. It is now okay. just a painful memory. This was Veronica two years ago. And this is Veronica today. Dr. DeSalas is just very special to me because for someone who can change my life, that, that's, that's big. 
It was a miracle.